Over the last month and a half, we as a community have been knocking it out of the park, building up Autodev, our fork of Bolt.nu, which we are building to be the best open source AI coding assistant. And one of the most requested features to add to Autodev is the ability to load existing local projects into the platform so that you can continue to work on them within Autodev. And I am super happy to announce that it is finally available. This super highly requested feature is now ready for you to use thanks to Edward, one of the core maintainers of Autodev, who also has his own YouTube channel that I'll link to in the description of this video because I really want to give credit where credit is due. It is so awesome that we have this now. There are also a lot of other incredible people making equally amazing contributions to Autodev, so we're going to dive into all of this right now. And also a couple weeks ago, we started a roadmap for Autodev just to lay out the vision. And at the start of that roadmap is a bunch of really high priority features that we've already started to knock out. These are the things that we really need for Autodev to make it a mature project. So I'm super excited to show them all off and talk about what's going on. Also really exciting developments on the horizon for Autodev. Very soon here, we are set to announce a strategic partnership that is going to absolutely supercharge this project beyond what I could have even dreamed dreamed of when we started. It's really a best case scenario. Really looking forward to announcing this to all of you very soon. We are still figuring out the timing and logistics for everything. And so that's why I can't speak to it a ton right now. But later on in this video, I will talk about how it is going to help Autodev and really turn it into the mature project that we are all looking for. Really exciting stuff. So with that being said, let's dive into everything we've got. All right, so let's dive right into testing out this new local project load feature. And I'll also showcase some other features as we're going through this example here, because you can see looking at the UI, there is a lot of work that has been done on Autodev since the last time I made an update video. So many cool features here. We've got importing chats, which you can export by the way as well, once you're actually within the coding view. Import folders, that's what I'm about to show here. A lot of really neat UI why changes to make it more similar to the commercial bolt.new. Um, also, if you go into the chat history here, you can search through your chats now. You can collapse the model settings so you have more room in your UI. And yeah, so many cool things here. A lot more once we actually get into the coding as well. And so yeah, let's go ahead and import a folder. So I'll click on import folder and I've got this example project right here that I'll select. I actually built this in Autodesk. So I built it, exported it, and now I'm re-uploading it. Or you could upload something that you built with bolt.new or you coded yourself, whatever you wanna do. So I'm uploading 13 files into this site. I'll click on upload and boom, there we go. It loaded everything in and it also understands all the files that imported as well. So I could say something like describe these files and it's going to have all that context it needs to continue from where we left off with whatever I imported here. And so yeah, it totally understands what's going on here which is super, super nice. The one thing I'll say, there is a limitation to bolt.new as a whole when it comes to loading in projects. You're not gonna be able to load in massive, massive projects because that's just gonna crash the site as it's trying to import all the files. And so make sure that you keep it to, I don't know, maybe less than 100 files just to be safe. Also, don't bring in your entire node modules folder because even though we have an ignore set up to not take in, you know, like .github or node modules folders and things like that, it still has to be brought into the front end before it can be filtered. So just keep in mind, keep your imports nimble and then it'll work really, really well. Um, so yeah, I can toggle the model settings here. Nice little UI change. And then yeah, we can look and see its answer. And yeah, it totally understands and it can even extend this. So I could say, extend this to improve the UI. I'm just giving you something very generic here just to show that it's able to work with these files as well. It's not like it just understands it. It's actually as if we coded this entire thing and we're just continuing on in the conversation. So absolutely beautiful. Also some other features here. You can revert to a specific message in the conversation, which is really, really helpful because if it messes up and you just wanna scrap what it did in the last message or last couple of messages, you can do that. You can fork the chat from this message as well. Really, really awesome features that we just need so, so bad. You can export the chat. So this is that option I was talking about earlier so that back in the main UI, you can import a chat. Um, there've been some enhancements to the prompt enhance feature as well. So many amazing things going 
going on with this project here. So what I'm going to do here is pause and come back once this is done updating my code. All right, so it's finished making its changes, really proving that it not only understands the file structure, but it can interact with it just as if I had coded it up within the same conversation. Absolutely phenomenal. One thing I'll say when you import projects, a lot of times you'll have to tell it explicitly to run the installation and execution commands. And so I did that here, and then it ran the npm install and npm rum dev to spin up this site that we see right here. So yeah, you can just like type a message and then it responds with an example. This is just a very basic prompt. It doesn't look the best because I just threw out a random prompt, have it build something just as an example here. But yeah, it looks pretty neat. Like this is pretty awesome for just a single prompt. I loaded it in and was able to make improvements to it as well. So absolutely phenomenal. Loading local projects is working great. All right, I wanna go over the roadmap here, even though I have on another video already, just to set the stage for some of the new features that I'm going to showcase right now. So if I scroll down on this roadmap, we'll get to this first set of high priority features because some of them we are working on right now, others have already been implemented. So loading local projects, obviously what I just showcased, that is done. Next up, loading GitHub projects. That is in progress and I'll showcase that pull request as well, even though it hasn't been merged in yet. And then the other one, attach images to prompts. I'll also showcase this one, even with a demo later in this video, this one's in progress and is almost done. And then some other ones that we're still working on here, but we're nailing these down. We're making very great progress on that, which is super important to set the stage for going down the rest of our roadmap here, which by the way, we're gonna keep extending this roadmap as we continue to lay out the vision for Autodev. So super exciting stuff. And with that, we can dive into recent changes to Autodev. All right, where I last left off on my last update video for Autodev, we were at the streaming of code output by the Codicus, which by the way, he's made some other phenomenal additions that I'll cover later as well. And so since then, we've had a lot of amazing changes. Not all of them are covered here because I want to keep this list pretty concise, but a lot of tiny additions to Autodev as well that are just as important to make the project really mature. So I'll cover some of those and other PRs very quickly too. But we have Edward, again, I'm linking his YouTube in the description of this video. He added the ability to revert code to earlier versions, which I already showcased. Then we have the Cohere integration by Hassan, also by Hassan, dynamic model max token links, which is really important because different models had different requirements for max token links. And then Sujal has added in prompt caching. And then again, the big high priority task that's been knocked out, loading local projects again from Edward. So he's been making some incredible additions. And then we also have some other high priority things that are in progress here, almost done. The top one being attaching images to prompts. And so we've got that almost done here, just a couple of additions that need to be added to really make it a PR that's ready to be merged. And I'm working with the developer on that, but this is gonna be really exciting to bring in. And I'll even showcase this later on in the video, giving a little demo with that. Uh, and so yeah, some other pull requests that I wanna cover really quickly here with some smaller things. Dustin Loring has been doing some phenomenal additions to Autodev super recently. Even as recent as this morning, I've merged in a couple of PRs uh, from him. And so some stable additions that he added, just like, some things to really make this project all cleaned up and nice and tidy. A lot of work that he's been putting into this. Also, he's one who worked on the UI and helped me bring in the prompt caching request from Sue Hall, which by the way, this is the original PR for that. So thank you so much for your work on this. This is super important as well with the prompt caching. Oh, but yeah, and then back to the PRs here. A lot of little things that are super, super important. Um, like fixing the artifact actionless loading, a lot of linting things and things with tests and CICD. So Sue Hall, and then also Oliver, let's see if I can find a PR for him. Yeah, here we go. Oliver, they've been doing some things with linting and testing and stuff that I really, really appreciate because we really need to start on that to make Autodev more mature. So thank you so much for your fixes for that. Quick code, some mobile friendly updates. Uh, here we got the Cohere support, so many really awesome things. Then also the Codicus, he also added this dedicated documentation page for Autodev. So whenever we have a new merge in the main, it recompiles this based on the readmes we have in the repo, the markdown files that we have for like the contribution guidelines and our main readme, and it makes a dedicated page for the documentation, which definitely makes the project look more mature. I appreciate this a lot. It really is just taking what we have in the repo but it makes it so that you don't have to go within the different markdown files there to see all this. Uh, we even got like the new FAQs as well, which I added pretty recently. So super cool that we have all this here. I appreciate that a lot. And so yeah, with that, that's pretty much everything that's been added in. Now I want to talk about some of the in-progress stuff that is really exciting. 
First up, we have the Git repository integration, so you can load Git repos into Autodev just like you can load local projects. This is in progress by the Codicus. He's been making a bunch of other amazing changes, so I definitely trust that he's gonna knock this one out of the park. It's not ready yet, but it will be pretty soon here, and then that's gonna be an awesome addition to have along with loading in local projects. So whether it's in Git or local, you'll be able to take care of both. So really looking forward to this one. The other one that we have that I already alluded to is attaching images to prompts. This one is super close to being ready. So I, the only reason I haven't brought it in yet is I just have a couple of pieces of feedback for the developer here just to make sure that it is a top-notch PR because this is a really important request. This is a really important feature to get right. And so, yeah, we'll be bringing this one in really soon, but I actually want to showcase this to you right now because it's that close to being done. And I'll even show you how you can do that. So if you have GitHub Desktop installed, you can go down to the bottom of the pull request and open this in GitHub Desktop. And what that's going to do is switch you from the main branch to a branch specifically for this PR. And then within my terminal here, I can run pmpm PM install to reinstall the packages because things are gonna be a little bit different in this branch most likely. And then I can either run with Docker or just run with pmpm right in my command line here. So just to keep it simple, I'll just run it with um, the pmpm run dev command right here. And then I'm going to uh, open up my Google Chrome Canary again and go back to my homepage and refresh. And then boom, there we go. So now we are within this pull request specifically where we have this new button here to upload a file. And so I'm gonna upload a file I'm gonna go back to my documents. I have this sample web page right here that I'm uploading as an image. And so, yeah, you can see this is working really, really nice. And I can even start by asking it to describe this image just to show that Claude can actually comprehend this image that I uploaded. And by the way, this is only going to work for models that actually support images like Claude, for example. Um, you know, you could go to OpenAI and go to GPT-40. That's another example. But if you go to Olama and you try to use like, you know, Quen Coder, for example, it's not gonna understand images. So make sure that when you test this out and once this is in main, especially, that you actually use a model that can understand images. So I'll have it describe this image here. Let's see what it comes out with. Um, so yeah, there we go. It describes this website very, very well. That is perfect. And one of my critiques is it doesn't show the image yet right here in the chat history. That's one of the things that I'm looking for before I merge that. Um, but once we have that, this is gonna be like absolutely perfect and so now i can even say uh, code up this website for me now I'll go into the web container and it'll try to replicate it and usually when you upload an image like this even the best models like claude can't replicate it super well but you can definitely see here even just looking at the text in the the html here that it definitely is understanding the image and then trying to replicate it that's the important part here is the feature works i don't know if the results are going to look the best but let me pause and come back once it's done and we'll see if it can even match it at all all right so it is done and yeah the results are about what i expected it doesn't really have images and so that hurts it a lot as well um, it didn't replicate it extremely well, but yeah, like I said, you can definitely tell that the feature of image uploading is working because it is at least a replica to some extent with the layout and the colors. So yeah, it's pretty cool. This feature is working great. Looking forward to have this uh, in the main repo very, very soon here. Now I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about the strategic partnership that I mentioned at the start of the video. And like I said there, we're still working through the timing of the announcement and logistics. And so I can't talk specifics yet but it's still really important for me to share with you how that's going to help Autodev because there's definitely a couple of big opportunities that we have to take Autodev to the next level. First of all, we as a core maintainer team have done pretty good with organizing this repository considering it's only a month and a half old, but it's still definitely not the most well-organized open source project by any means. There's a ton of opportunity for improving tests and CI/CD creating issue templates, managing our pull requests better, even managing the community better. And this partnership is going to bring in open source experts who are going to really make that happen. We as a team have really been putting in the time and effort now, but this expertise is what's really gonna make this project shine as an open source effort. Also, this strategic partnership is going to bring in financial 
incentives, which is the reason I haven't started a crowdfunding campaign yet. So when I say financial incentives, I mean things like rewarding people for contributing to AutoDev, supporting the core contributor team, myself not included by the way, uh, but really just everything that we need financially to, again, take AutoDev to the next level. And also this partnership is going to bring a lot of visibility and credibility into the project so that it is definitely going to transition into something that is not just a hobbyist project. This is going to be the real deal and really what pushes AutoDev to be the best open source AI coding assistant. So really exciting stuff coming soon. Stay tuned for the announcements for that. Definitely still a lot of work that has to be done for AutoDev to really turn it into the best open source AI coding assistant. But we are certainly getting there. The progress has been phenomenal and super encouraging for me and the entire community. And stay tuned for all these updates that we got coming up soon for AutoDev. And if you haven't recently, go ahead and download all of the cool new features, some of which I showcased in this video, and try it out for yourself. And also join our think tank as well, our AutoDev community, and just be a part of everything that is happening here. If you appreciate this content and you're looking forward to more things AutoDev, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.